I'm Nicole Robinson Gordon reporting for Right Here, Right Now. I'm here in London Bridge to interview Sophie Trenchell, the Director Manager of Divine Chocolate, to find out about the fair trade industry. Being a social enterprise, what is Divine Chocolate's central ethos? So Divine's mission is to improve the livelihoods of cocoa farmers in West Africa by establishing a dynamic branded chocolate marketing company in the UK market, which then puts farmers higher up the value chain. And so what, what we mean by that is that cocoa farmers sell cocoa, and that's raw ingredients, and the price of cocoa goes up and down, depending on how much crop there is and how much people want to buy it. But the chocolate market in places like Britain and in America is very valuable, and the shareholders of those companies have become very rich. And so what we're trying to do is get some of that value for the farmers who grow the cocoa. Do you think that heart-hitting charity appeals shown on TV have desensitised the public, resulting in consumers becoming detached from the reality of unfair trade? What can be done to overcome this stigma and show that fair trade, more specifically divine chocolate, does make an effective change to the life of cocoa farmers? The, the clever charities have managed to make the to show the devastation, to show the difficult situation that people find themselves in, but in a way that makes you feel you can make a difference. So I think the trick that fair trade has done is show you difficult things and say it's got something to do with you because you, you buy a chocolate bar so you can make a difference or you drink a cup of coffee so you can make a difference. And so I sort of feel as if my, my reaction to this sort of really overwhelming devastation that you see when, something, when there's been a natural disaster, like the, the earthquake in Haiti, is a sort of a hopelessness of it's hopeless for them and it's hopeless because what can I do about it? So I've seen this awful thing and what can I do next? And I think the uh, success of Divine and Fair Trade has been that we've offered people something that they can do. I think we've also shortened the distance so that the chocolate comes from Ghana which is um, you know three and a half thousand miles away and so that when you buy that chocolate bar you don't imagine what it's like being a cocoa farmer in Ghana and what we've tried to do is help you imagine that and so that if when you went to buy the chocolate bar from your corner shop you felt as if the person in your corner shop couldn't afford to send their child to school and couldn't afford to put food on the table you'd feel bad about paying them so little for the chocolate bar you'd feel embarrassed and you wouldn't want to go back. And so what we're trying to do is make you realise as a consumer that that's the relationship you have and that you can make a difference. And so that if you pay that bit more and you buy something that's from a fair trade supply chain and you buy Divine, which the farmers actually own 45% of the company, then you can make the difference between choosing to buy something that doesn't guarantee that people can afford to send their children to school and put food on the table and something that does. And so I think it's very important to make people not feel useless and hopeless and so I think where I don't like what charities do is when they show you things that just seem absolutely overwhelming and out of control, as if you can't do anything about it. Cadbury has launched its Fair Trade Dairy Milk Bar, and its launch was described by the Fair Trade Foundation as opening up new opportunities for thousands more farmers to benefit from the fair trade system. Will this cr increased competition posed by Cadbury hinder divine chocolate? or it is seen as a positive move as Divine Chocolate is essentially a social enterprise. When we set out 10 years ago and we sort of set out our shop, um, clearly we wanted to convert the major chocolate companies to fair trade. We wanted to be, in a way, the threat of a good example. We wanted to show that if a small company could do business well and, and be a success, then shouldn't big companies do that too? So clearly we wanted Cadbury's to convert to fair trade. So we're really pleased that they have converted Cadbury's dairy milk to fair trade. We'd like to see them convert the rest of their chocolate bars to fair trade. But I think the thing, and that has delivered real benefits to cocoa farmers in Ghana because they, they obviously use a much bigger volume of cocoa beans than Divine can, can, can use because they have a much bigger market share. But I think what you need to recognise is that 10 years ago that really wouldn't have been possible and it wouldn't have been possible for a number of reasons. It wouldn't have been possible because there wasn't a market for fair trade. So consumers weren't asking for that guarantee. What we've done over the 10 years is establish that there are a significant amount of consumers who care about the livelihoods of the cocoa farmers in West Africa and that they are potentially prepared to pay a bit more, they're potentially prepared to go to a different shop to buy a different chocolate bar. And so we've established that there is a market demand, but we've also worked with the cocoa farmers over 15 years to build up their capacity to deliver good quality cocoa. So that when Cadbury's come into fair trade, they're working with the farmers that we've worked with for 15 years and they're buying cocoa from them. So if we hadn't both built up a market demand and we hadn't 
invested in the cocoa farmers so that they had the capacity to deliver the sort of tonnage that Cadbury's need, then Cadbury's wouldn't have been able to make that conversion. So we're really pleased that Cadbury's have made that conversion and the benefits that that will deliver for cocoa farmers in West Africa. But we're also pleased because more consumers in Britain will be able to show they care by buying those chocolate bars. But we really hope that they'll convert all of their chocolate to fair trade. Is the run involved in any projects in Ghana that young people in the UK can get involved in? For instance, projects or newsletters or internet sites? We've developed an education pack with Comic Relief which is called Papa Pa, which means the best of the best in Twi, which is the language that the cocoa farmers uh, speak. And so that's been used at Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 3, so that's the bottom of um, secondary school and the top of junior school. But we've also um, got a bar called Double, which we do with young people and with Comic Relief. And there's a website called double.co.uk where young people can sign up to change the world chunk by chunk. And so we've got 55,000 young people have signed up on that website and they take on missions, which is about telling people about Double and Fair Trade and chocolate and doing things like that. But we've also set up an educational charity, which is called Trading Visions. And so Trading Visions is at tradingvisions.org. And um, that's a place where we're wanting to have a sort of more grown-up debate about how we can influence the way the world works through trade and how we can make trading fairer. And it's something where we're managing to get people from all around the world to actually start to contribute towards a discussion about how can the world be a fairer place through, through the way that we run the economy.